readings from Salt Lake City. I hope you're enjoying virtual JNEC 2021. My name is Dan Snelson, and I am a senior system engineer with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We are frequently called Mormons because of our belief in a volume of companion scripture to the Holy Bible called the Book of Mormon. Let's talk about how to nudge your users to keep macOS up to date with Jamf Pro. Here's our agenda. We'll start with why you should consider using Nudge to prompt your users to keep macOS up to date. We'll then talk about planning your deployment strategy and spend the bulk of our time together configuring Nudge. I'll then share some real world mistakes, I mean examples, and we'll finish off with some resources. To begin our discussion of the why and what of Nudge, let's take a look at a demo. Here's an example of prompting users to update macOS with Nudge when there are seven days remaining to your specified deadline. Nudge is configured to prompt the user to update to macOS 11.3.1, which was the latest version available to this Mac at the time of the screen recording. The user reviews the on-screen message and clicks open software update. The Mac checks in with Apple servers and the user has the option to click update now, but the user instead closes the software update preference pane and then clicks Nudge's later button. So that was an example of Nudge when there are seven days left remaining to your specified deadline. Let's now review an extreme example of the user experience when the deadline you specified has passed. When the deadline you specify has passed, Nudge offers granular customization for how aggressive you can be with prompting your users to update. The user is casually reading about a Jamf Nation feature request and gets Nudge to update. Since the deadline has passed, the later button is no longer displayed. The deferred count equals one, and in this example, we're only going to allow two deferrals before Nudge's aggressive mode takes over. Strike one. The user returns to their web page, deferring Nudge. Now the deferred count equals two, and for the sake of time, it's two strikes and you're out. the user returns to reading the feature request, again, deferring nudge. With the allowed deferral setting of two, now exceeded by three deferrals, nudge enters aggressive mode. The active Safari window is completely replaced by nudge, and the software updates preference pane is auto-launched. The user closes software update and tries to ignore the prompt to update. And so it goes. The nudge deferred count continues to increase as the user ignores the prompt. Again, this is an extreme example to quickly illustrate Nudge's aggressive mode. Using Jamf's technical paper, Deploying macOS Upgrades and Updates with Jamf Pro as a guide, let's review the available options to keep your Mac fleet up to date. While you can certainly use macOS recovery to reinstall the Mac operating system, it isn't very automated. Let's display it in yellow. If you have Macs with Apple Silicon in your fleet, running software update using a policy isn't really an option any longer. Let's display this in red. Packaging and deploying the macOS installer works, but you'll probably have a better experience using Graham's erase install approach. We'll display packaging and deploying the macOS installer in yellow and erase install in green, which leads us to the Apple preferred solution. 
updating macOS by sending a MDM command. Ensuring your fleet is running El Capitan or later should be fairly easy. But even if we have Apple School Manager or Apple Business Manager fully integrated with Jamf Pro, sometimes macOS devices are purchased outside of approved channels or are manually enrolled and automated device enrollment, which is required, isn't an option for the macOS device you want to ensure is up to date. Be sure to check out Managing Devices with Apple Configurator from this year's WWDC. This leads us to the what of Nudge. Nudge is an application for prompting users to install macOS updates written by Eric Gomez. The tool is written in Swift and requires macOS 11 or later. You can find the source code on GitHub, along with tips and tricks on the Mac Edmonds Nudge channel. As I was preparing this presentation, the traveling tech guy published an interesting article just as macOS 11.4 dropped, which mentions Nudge, worth a read. Let's plan your deployment strategy. Ensure you understand what Nudge is and what Nudge is not. Nudge merely prompts users to install updates via Apple approved methods, the software update system preference pane. Major application upgrades are achieved via a standalone installer. For example, install macOS Monterey.app. While Nudge will compare a Mac's currently installed version of macOS to the value of required minimum OS version, before deploying Nudge to computers with Jamf Pro, if you're delaying software updates, review the computer's inventory software updates to ensure the version users are being prompted to install is available. More on that later. Carefully review Nudge's preferences and determine if deploying a configuration profile or JSON will best meet your needs. A configuration profile can be created by using a Jamf Pro JSON schema for Nudge and makes it possible for Jamf Pro administrators to change the values in the configuration profile via the Jamf Pro GUI. We have a demo coming up. If you deploy a standard configuration profile, it must be signed or it will be modified by Jamf Pro. The GitHub Wiki includes links with detailed information. Nudge has support for both local and remote JSON. By default, Nudge will look for JSON located in library preferences. Additionally, you can use the Jamf Pro script payload to deploy JSON for Nudge. To help you determine your deployment strategy, let's look at configuration methods. Here are three possible configuration methods. There are certainly others. Option number one is when you are first testing Nudge. You'll install the latest Nudge app and then review the Nudge README and Getting Started pages in your favorite web browser and use Terminal to modify Nudge's configuration. When you're satisfied with your Nudge configuration on your local test Mac, it's time to deploy to your testing group. Every release of Nudge includes an optional launch agent package, which we see in option number two. This launch agent will open Nudge every 30 minutes on the hour and half past the hour. We'll still need to deploy the Nudge app itself, and with this option, a configuration profile is deployed for Nudge's settings. Option number three is what we're using. A custom launch agent and local JSON is deployed via the Jamf Pro script payload. Let's take a look at a demo of option number two. A configuration profile can be created by using the Jamf Pro JSON schema for Nudge, allowing Jamf Pro administrators to change values via the Jamf Pro GUI. On the left, we have the Jamf Pro guide for Nudge, and on the right, we're logged into Jamf Pro. Click Computers at the top. Click Configuration Profiles. Click New. Use the general payload to configure basic settings. Specify a category and ensure level is set to computer level and the distribution method is set to install automatically. Now we'll scroll to find the application and custom settings payload and select external applications. Click add. Choose custom schema as source. 
and then enter com.github.macadmins.nudge as the preference domain. Click Add Schema and paste the entire contents Click Save to display a list of configurable settings. Click the Scope tab to configure the scope of the profile. And click Save. The step-by-step -step instructions, as well as the screencast, are available at the Nudge Wiki. If, instead of relying solely on APNS to push configuration profiles, you'd like to deploy local JSON to configure Nudge, the Nudge post-install script may prove helpful. As a reminder, this was previously referred to as option number three. In a nutshell, a bash script configures the launch agent to your specifications, a launch daemon for redirecting Nudge's logs and then creates the necessary JSON file client-side. The script also hides Nudge and includes a reset function for when you make script parameter changes in your Jamf Pro policy and need to update your fleet. If you are unfamiliar with the Jamf Pro concepts of uploading packages, defining smart groups, and creating policies, the Nudge Wiki includes links to Jamf's official documentation. Let's look at a demo of an unmodified Nudge post-install script. Here's a demo of the Nudge post-install script without modifications, which uses the field names for the various values. The screenshot can be enlarged and closed by a click. This screenshot and the next are included in the Nudge Wiki. I found this to be a helpful reference as I was populating the various field values. Next, let's take a brief under the hood look at the Nudge post install script. We allow our upper tier TSRs to execute scripts via Jamf Remote, but we don't allow them to view the actual scripts in Jamf Pro. Occasionally, a TSR will execute a script via Jamf Remote, which I really wish they hadn't. So we came up with an authorization key for our more impactful scripts. The concept is to use a script parameter to check for some random string of characters before allowing a script to execute. You'll add an if-then-else to your script, which checks for some random string of characters. If the past script parameter doesn't match, exit. If it does match, proceed. If you'd like more detailed information, here's a link to a Jamf Nation post from a few years back. The reset configuration function is called from a script parameter in your Jamf Pro policy. Available options include all, JSON, launch agent, or launch daemon. So for example, if in your Jamf Pro policy to configure Nudge, you change the required minimum OS version from 11.3.1 to 11.4 and modify the required installation date and time to the end of the month, you'll want to at least reset the JSON file when you flush the policy log so the policy runs again. If you've also made changes to the script itself since it was last deployed, for example, modifying how frequently the launch engine executes, you'll probably want to set this value to all. The Nudge post install script creates a launch daemon to redirect Nudge's logging. Since the plist domain variable is passed from the Jamf Pro policy as a script parameter, 
this portion of the code shouldn't require any modification. However, please review before deploying it in production. This portion of the script is where I spent the bulk of my configuration time. But once you're happy with the client-side JSON, it shouldn't require many additional tweaks. Let's review the user experience section as these settings seem to be the most asked about on the Mac admin Slack. Nudge's user experience section seems to be the most talked about of all the settings on the Mac admin Slack. A word of caution, there is going to be a lot of text on this slide. Don't tell Armin. But I hope overwhelming you now will reduce the time you spend tweaking Nudge's various settings. Also, this slide is not a substitute for reading and understanding the official Nudge documentation available on the wiki. If you have questions about these settings, my recommendation is to review the wiki and experiment. Prepare to be overwhelmed. We'll start with a pair of settings you'll most likely never change. If you set no timers to true, all functionality related to the user experience preference domain will be disabled. I have always left this setting to its default of false. The nudge refresh cycle key controls nudge's core timer. I've always left this setting to its default of 60. Now let's move on to settings which you will most likely change from their defaults. Allowed deferrals is the number of times a user can change nudge from being the currently active window. In our aggressive example, after nudge prompted the user to upgrade, the user returned to browsing a web page which deferred nudge. Note, the deferral count is only tied to the active nudge session. If a user closes nudge and the launch agent reopens nudge, the deferral count will restart at zero. The allowed deferrals until force secondary quit button controls the number of deferrals before both quit buttons need to be clicked. In the branded customized examples I provided earlier, user interface single quit button was set to true. So the user will only ever observe a single quit button, which we labeled later. Let's look at the next two settings as a pair. Approaching window time is the number of hours Nudge will use to determine that the required installation date is approaching. The required installation date is set in the OS version requirements section and in the Nudge post install script it's one of the script parameters. Approaching refresh cycle is the number of seconds Nudge will use to refresh the UI. In our aggressive example, this was every 15 seconds. Once the required installation date has passed, elapsed refresh cycle is the number of seconds Nudge will use to refresh its UI. So approaching refresh cycle is before the deadline and elapsed refresh cycle is after the deadline which offers some nice granularity. Let's look at the next two settings as a pair. Imminent window time is the number of hours Nudge uses to determine that the required installation date is imminent. And imminent refresh cycle is the number of seconds before Nudge will refresh its UI. Once the approaching window time has expired, initial refresh cycle is the number of seconds Nudge will use to refresh its UI. Whew! Two more, they're easy, and we'll review them as a pair. If you set random delay to true, nudge will wait the number of seconds specified in max random delay in seconds before launching its UI. So if you use the included launch agent, which executes on the hour and half past the hour, you may not want all your users to be prompted exactly at the top and the bottom of each hour. When testing, I recommend leaving random delay at its default setting of false, and then for production, setting random delay to true. We made it. That's enough to make your head spin. <laughs> Again, this slide is not a substitute for reading and understanding the official nudge documentation available on the wiki. If you have questions about these settings, my recommendation is to review the wiki and experiment or head on over to the Nudge channel on the Mac Admin Slack. The Nudge post install script also creates a launch agent which controls how frequently Nudge launches. 
once you've determined the desired frequency, you shouldn't need, again, to modify this portion of the code. This portion of the script is a complete lift from Eric's work to actually load the launch agent. Let's now look at some real world mistakes. Take a look at May 2021. You gotta love a month with five Sundays, five Mondays, and five Saturdays. Apple released Mac OS 11.3 on the 26th of April. We are imposing a one day delay for our opt-in beta testers, shown in orange, so they can start upgrading on the 27th of April. For our general workforce, we're imposing a 30 day delay, which would make the update available to the general workforce on the 26th of May. This is all well and good until Apple released Mac OS 11.3.1 the following week on the 3rd of May. Our opt-in beta testers were then able to start testing on May the 4th be with you. But the 30-day delay pushed our general workforce out another week. For the sake of argument, hypothetical situation, asking for a friend, let's say you had completed your nudge testing with your opt-in beta testers in late April and were ready to deploy to your general workforce on the 12th of May. However, when your general workforce users were prompted update nudge, the Mac OS 11.3 upgrade was not available. What if you had your workforce users try the next day? Or the next? Now, I'm not saying that I have firsthand experience with this hypothetical situation, but I'm also not not saying that I have firsthand experience with this completely hypothetical situation. Seems like the thing to do would be to reduce the software update delay from 30 days to seven days so the Macs could see the Mac OS 11.3.1 update as an available option. And to complete our May 2021 calendar, on the 24th of May, Apple released Mac OS 11.4. So, for our first real world example, if you're delaying software updates, first ensure computers show an update available before deploying Nudge. Next, if your needs are modest, you may be able to have a single script and a single policy. If you have opt-in beta testers, and you should, you'll most likely want to use a single script with multiple policies, differing the minimum OSs and deadlines. And of course, you could have multiple scripts and multiple policies. The most obvious difference here is an aggressive experience for your opt-in beta testers to get the latest OS validated as soon as possible with a more lenient experience for your general workforce. Your opt-in beta testers can always opt out via self-service if they're unable to keep up with the demands of your beta testing program. As a reminder, the Nudge Post install script includes launch agent settings, so you can prompt your opt-in beta testers more frequently than your general workforce. Finally, by adjusting a policy's script parameters, you may actually reduce the required OS to an earlier version and extend the deadline if Apple's release cycle outpaces your preferred delay, as previously illustrated. For example, if you reduce the 30-day delay to a seven-day delay, and then Apple releases a new update before you're satisfied with the previous update, you can reduce the required OS version. Once you're confident the latest OS is working as expected, you'll modify both the required OS and its deadline. Now for some resources. As you get started with Nudge, your first stop should be GitHub. When you need tips and tricks, head on over to the Nudge channel on the Mac Admin Slack. If you have a feature request or a technical issue, please submit an issue on GitHub. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of Virtual JNUC 2021.